Hi all, today in this presentation we will be talking about an accident happened in Jasma olefin plant. In our presentation we will be covering the company background, the process flow of the plant, some details on the unit that the accident happened, some technical analysis followed by the weakness of PSM program and some recommendation. We will first start off with a brief introduction of the production plant. This tragedy happened in a William Jesma Olefin plant, which is located at Jesma of Louisiana in United States. The production plant was designed and built by the Lummus Company in 1967 and later owned by the Williams Olefin in 1999. This production plant has around 110 employees and the production plant is capable to produce around 1.35 billion pounds of ethylene and 80 million pounds of propylene annually. We will now look at the process flow of the entire plant. This process uses the thermal cracking to produce ethylene and propylene from ethane and propane. So the process starts with the feed of ethane and propane and it will then enter a cracking furnace to be converted into the main product ethylene and propylene as well as a several byproduct including the butanzaine, aromatic compound, methane and hydrogen. The stream will then be cooled going through a series of heat exchanger and be further cooled with direct contact with quenched water uh, in the quench tower. So after contact with the tower, the stream will then be compressed and dried passing through the compressor and dryer. And some of the heavy undesired byproduct will be separated through the feed separator uh, while the remaining component will then undergo a series of distillation. So the first stage of the distillation is a demethanizer. Methane will be separated out from the multi-component stream, while the remaining will be channeled to the next distillation column. The deethanizer. The ethane and ethylene will exit the distillation column through the vapor stream. However, there will be some acetylene as the byproduct. So the vapor stream will first go through the acetylene converter to convert the acetylene into ethylene before going into the ethylene fractionator. The ethylene fractionator will then separate the ethylene from ethane at the vapor stream and the unreacted ethane will be recycled back to the feed of the entire process. So after the separation of ethylene, the remaining stream will progress into the, the propanizer. Similarly, the propane and propylene will be separated through the vapor stream and the undesired uh, propadiene will then be converted into propylene before entering the propylene uh, fractionator. Then in the propylene and um, propane stream will be separated through the propylene uh, fractionator and the unreacted propane will also recycle back to the feed. And the remaining heavy mixture will then go to the last stage of distillation which is the deputanizer. Butane diene will be separated through the vapor stream while the heavy substance like the aromatic compound will be separated through the liquid stream. And the explosion actually happens at the propylene fractionator. Uh, before we get into details of the accident, we will need to understand what leads to the accident. So this is the quench water cycle where the heated quench water will be used as the heating utility for the reboiler for the propylene fractionator as indicated in the highlighted symbols. The reboiler is actually a shell and tube action exchanger. As I had mentioned just now, there is a quench tower with direct contact with water uh, where the substance will have contact with water. So after the oil touches the water, there is a quench water settler to remove the oil product. However, it is impossible to completely remove all the oil. So the water with the oil stream will enter the pump and the tube of the reboiler for heating purpose. Over a long time of period, the tar might deposit and block the tube which will lower the efficiency or even fail the equipment. So this phenomena is known as the fouling. So the accident happens when the reboiler air operating reboiler have fouling issues. So they switch from reboiler A to reboiler B, but what they do know is the reboiler B actually has a small crack on it. So when the high pressure streams flows through reboiler B, the liquid vapor expansion occur. So due to the sudden increase of the pressure, the cracks propagates on the reboiler. 
and eventually ruptures. And the olefin in the shell site has escaped into the air and got ignited. An explosion occurred. And now my groupmate Kijin will be talking on the details of the accident. I'm Wukiji. Now I will talk about the unit object involved in the incident. The unit object involved in the incident is at the propylene fractionator. When the repeller air was under maintenance, the operationator supervisor operated the offline repeller by opening the quench water valve. A rapid increase of the water flow in the repeller caused a pressure increase. After 3 minutes, the repeller B explode. Propane propylene process get interrupted. Process vapor ignite and massive fireball create. In the first diagram, it shows the rebirth of the propylene fractionator after the explosion. You can see that this is a dissolution column and this is rebirth and this is the rebirth vapor return piping. It should be connected to this point and also this point. In the second diagram, it shows the rebirth B after the explosion. You can clearly see the tubing side of the rebirth. Now I'll talk about the technical problem. There are liquid propane was found in the standby rebuilder B. Based on the record of the company on the February 2012, the broker left the rebuilder B on standby with filling nitrogen and isolated with a single closed valve on its outlet. This situation caused the liquid propane remain in the rebuilder. However, the company did not notice there are liquid propane in the rebuilder due to the lack of instrumentation to detect it. For the second problem, the liquid thermal expansion of the rebuilder B. The CSB observed that the valve in the inlet or the tubing side, the whole quench water valve was open, while the outlet of the shell side was closed. An increase of temperature of the propane liquid in shell side caused an increase of the volume of the shell side. Therefore, liquid thermal expansion of the rebuilder happened. The rebuilder over pressure and explodes. Next, I will talk about the technical knowledge. Before the standby rebuilder set to online, the fault rebuilder should be shut down, drained, blind, and clean. Then the blind of the rebuilder should be removed and pressurized with nitrogen gases, and leaving the inlet and outlet block valve isolate the standby rebuilder from the dissection column. Now passing to my groupmate to continue. Hi, I am Li Yuezhen. Now, I would like to continue on the safety part of this incident. Let us look on the weakness of the process safety management program of William Jasmine. Firstly, Williams did not perform adequate management of change or pre startup safety reviews for the two significant process changes involving the propylene fractionator reboilers. As a result, the company did not evaluate and control all hazards introduced to the process by those changes. Next, Williams did not adequately implement action items developed during process hazard analysis or recommendations from a contracted pressure relief system engineering analysis. Consequently, Williams did not effectively apply overpressure protection by either a pressure relief valve or by administrative controls to the standby reboiler B. Furthermore, Williams did not perform a hazard analysis and develop a procedure prior to the operations activities conducted on the day of the incident. In other words, these casual attitudes have led to the failure of identifying and controlling the happen of this overpressurization hazard. These casual attitudes has disobeyed the requirements by both OSHA as part of its process safety management regulation and by the Environmental Protection Agency as part of its chemical accident prevention provisions. From the OSHA regulation and the EPA regulation, the conduct of MOC is necessary if any modification of covered process. Among other requirements, OSHA and EPA require that a facility's MOC reviews consider the impact of the change on safety and health along with any possible modification of procedures. In addition, both OSHA and EPA require companies to train all the affected employees on the change prior to the start of implementation. So, after reviewing the weakness of the PSM programs of Williams, 
I would like to provide some recommendations to minimize the risk of happening similar hazard. First of all, the company shall implement a continual improvement program to improve the process safety culture of the company. A committee of Williams personnel at a minimum includes safety and health representative, William management representative, and operations and maintenance workforce representative shall oversight this program and ensure the continual improvement program contains process safety culture assessments and workforce involvement. So for the process safety culture assessments, the company shall engage a process safety culture subject matter expert who is selected by the committee and is independent of the JASMA site to administer a periodic process safety culture assessment that includes surveys of personnel, interviews with personnel, and document analysis. Additionally, the personnel shall communicate the results of the process safety culture assessment in a report. For the workforce involvement, it shall engage the committee to review and comment on the expert report developed from the process safety culture assessments. Also, to oversee the development and effective implementation of action items to address process safety culture issues identified in the process safety culture assessment report. Next, the company shall develop and implement a permanent process safety metrics program that tracks leading and lagging process safety indicators. This metrics program is necessary to measure the effectiveness of the williams jesma Olympians facilities process safety management programs such as MOC and PSSR. Deep effectiveness shall be evaluated based on the quality of programs and the completeness of the programs. Moreover, this metrics program shall effectively measure the williams jesma methods to effectively and timely complete action items developed as a result of process hazard analysis, management of change, incident investigations, audits, and safety culture assessments. Other than that, the program is used to measure the effectiveness of the William Jesma development and the implementation of operating procedures. So this is the end of our presentation. Thank you for watching and please feel free to ask any question. Thank you.